Hello, um, my name is Emma. Um, I am a vintage seller on Etsy. I My shop name is Doris Lorraine Vintage. It's named after my grandmother. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say if you're hearing any weird snoring noises, mm. it's my French Bulldog Fudge. Mm. <laughs> He's sitting down here. You can't really see him. Um, <clears throat> so mm. I'm starting this channel um, a little bit as a motivator to myself. Um, but also there's not a ton of stuff out there about selling vintage on Etsy. And, um, I don't know. I've been looking, I've been looking for something where I can watch someone or listen to someone on a podcast or whatever the case may be, where they've turned it into, <laughs> where they've turned it into a, uh, full-time gig. And, I can't really find it. Um, there's, there is one guy on YouTube that I follow, um, that has turned it into a full-time gig, but <clears throat> I don't know. I just, I just want more. And I figured, well, if nobody else is doing it, maybe I can do it. I am not a full-time seller. I, uh, waitress in a restaurant in downtown Saratoga where I live, um, in New York state. But, um, I want to, turn this into a full-time situation eventually. My plan is kind of to retire from waitressing by the time I'm 35. Oh, bye fudge. Um, I am 26 right now. So I have nine years. That's a lot of years. Hopefully I can do it before then. I don't really still want to be, you know, schlepping food around and slinging beers when I'm 35, but I'll do it, you know. Um, <clears throat> so for my channel, I figured I may as well start from the beginning when I'm not full time. I don't know everything. I'm not, you know, totally established, but I figure maybe that's the best way to do it, to um, document things as I go along and uh, just figure things out with all of you. Um, <clears throat> so for today, Oh, well, I guess I should tell you about my store. So I started selling vintage things um, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, but like really, really, really not even, I wouldn't even say part-time. It was like, I'm just figuring it out. I don't even know how to do a listing, like really, really slow. Um, and I was a stay at home mom at the time. So I wanted to kind of give myself a hobby and like a little bit of a, you know, thing that kept me motivated every day because uh, changing diapers is not always the most inspiring thing. Um, <clears throat> but then I went back to work. I worked in a bank and that was horrible. Um, and so I stopped for that like five months that I worked there. I just like completely stopped. I don't even think I made a sale for that whole five months because I didn't, I wasn't even on Etsy. Sorry, I'm drinking my cranberry seltzer. Um, and then I hated that job. I got out of it. I went back to waitressing, which is what I used to do when I was younger and what I'm really good at. Um, so it's been about two years, but it's, you know, on and off, you know, just as you know, I have time in my life, whatever, with a four year old running around. Um, <clears throat> but now that I'm waitressing, um, I have like one to two days off a week where my son, Max, our son, Max is in school. So I have like a free, like five to six hours to do whatever I want, which is crazy. So, um, I've really gotten back into it. I am like slowly plugging away at my listings. Um, <clears throat> you know, I follow shops that have, you know, thousands of listings in their store and I am only at 92. <laughs> So, you know, I don't have a million, but I'm getting there and I'm doing, you know, at least three every day. And if I just keep doing it, it'll happen. So, um, oh, Fudge is back on the bed. Don't knock my table over, Fudge. Come here. If you want to come here, then come here. Fudgy. Come here. Come here. You could be in the video if you want. <clears throat> so... I thought today, those are kind of my plans, goals, where I'm at. Um, I thought I would show you guys a really, really easy way to get into selling vintage on Etsy or eBay or wherever you want to sell. But I'm just more familiar with Etsy because that's where I sell. Um, <clears throat> so 
something that drives my husband absolutely insane and something that I love is coffee cups. I cannot stop freaking buying coffee cups. I love them. I love them. They're easy. They're cheap. I mean, they are just addicting. They're totally addicting, but they really are a, a super easy way to start on Etsy, start in a vintage category without needing, you know, a huge knowledge base or anything like that. <clears throat> um, you can just look and go find some, you know, a cool coffee cup. I mean, I don't ever spend more than a dollar on a coffee cup and normally I spend 50 cents. It's literally pocket change. Um, you see the fudgy is a Frenchie with ears down. This is what he looked like normally, but we let his ears stay down. Um, <laughs> so I thought I'd show you a couple examples of coffee cups. I paid 50 cents for every single one of these. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. So here's my first one. This is a, like a white glass. So I know it's old. It's got to be from, you know, at least the seventies, if not earlier. Um, and it says bitch, bitch, bitch on it on both sides. And I mean, it's just one of those things that it just stands out. It's like a funny thing to have in your office. If your office is kind of chill, I don't know if you can have this in an office, but, um, <clears throat> it's like a good gag gift. Uh, you know, you could see your parents drinking this in the morning when they're like annoyed with you as a kid. Um, and on the bottom, I mean, you'll get to know makers marks as, as you go, but this one says heat proof with an F. I don't think that's fire King. It's an F and a shield. I don't think that's fire King. Um, <clears throat> but you know, something like this, I think I, Hey, what are you doing? You're licking things. That's weird. Um, I put this up for 24, I think. Um, and I bought it for 50 cents. So that's pretty easy. They're easy to list. They're quick to list. They're easy to weigh. They're easy to ship, easy to find. I mean, a coffee cup is the best way to get into vintage. If you're just starting and you don't know anything and you want to try it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Here's another weird one. Now this one is pretty weird. This is actually, I think the weirdest thing I've ever purchased at a thrift store. <clears throat> so here she is. This, <laughs> and yeah, they jiggle. Um, this is a weird, weird coffee cup. And the weird thing is like, I figured out when you drink it, like her boobs are always pointing up. It's like they made it so they're always perky. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> this was originally made for Spencer's in like the eighties or something. And it came with a guy mug that had like a leaf, you know, over his thing and it would like lift up whatever. Um, but so this is one of those things where, you know, you see it and you say, Oh, I've never freaking seen anything like that before. So I'm going to buy it. <clears throat> uh, she was 50 cents and she's on Etsy for $40. I put her up at a high price because to be honest, I really fought with myself over keeping this one. Cause I just thought it was so funny. Um, so I figured if somebody, if somebody buys her, I want them to really want her. I want them to pay $40 for a coffee cup. Um, but this mug it comes with a good lesson. So this is another thing that you can, you know, that you'll figure out as you go, if you are starting to sell vintage on Etsy. Um, like when you're looking things up so that you can have maker's marks and, you know, when it was made and what company made it and all that stuff. Um, you're going to find a lot of stuff that's accurate and you're going to find a lot of stuff that's not accurate. Um, and I looked this mug up and, it, and in three different places, three different sites, three different sellers, I bet one of them posted it and the other ones just copied that one. So they all had misinformation. <clears throat> they all said this was made in Japan in the 1950s. Okay. I don't think this was made in Japan in the 1950s. Um, I posted it on Facebook and it just so I, just because I thought it was funny and interesting. And I said, Oh my God, look at this crazy titty mug I bought or whatever. And one of my friend's moms actually posted and said, Oh my God, my husband and I, they're divorced now, but whatever. Um, bought those mugs as newlyweds in the 1980s when we first got married and we bought them from Spencer's. So the only information online that I could find was that they were made in Japan in the 1950s from three different sellers. They were all wrong. It was made in the 80s from Spencer's as like a gag gift. So 
research is a little tricky. You know, I've been doing it for a while now and I still make mistakes like that, you know? So that's just something to keep in mind. And, you know, you're not going to get everything perfect, but you know, just something to look out for. Um, <clears throat> then I have a third example of a coffee cup. Oh yeah. I have a third one. Um, this is a cool Yale coffee cup and it's, you can see crazing on there and there's a chip in the handle. Um, but there's only one other one on Etsy and you know, it sold for like $38 or something for a freaking coffee cup. Um, I just thought, you know, things like you're not always going to be able to sell like souvenir things, you know, from so-and-so Illinois, you know, not everybody wants that, but schools, big schools, Yale. I mean, somebody's going to buy this for like their student or their dad or their grandpa or somebody. Um, even though it's not perfect, they don't have to be in perfect condition. This has crazing all over it. There's a big chip on the handle and this is still going to sell. It's fine. Um, as long as the content is cool and interesting and brings up an emotion for someone, it does not have to be perfect. And, you know, vintage things are not perfect. So don't get too caught up <clears throat> in stuff like that. Um, and then I have an example of just a really easy, you know, these are kind of like, oh, you know, these are cool, interesting for whatever reason, the bitch, bitch, bitch mug, the titties, Yale, whatever. But <laughs> um, a really good starting point is like a really good company like Dance. Dance, dance, I don't know how you say it. Um, but they, here's the maker's mark. Whoop. They're out of Denmark. Um, so like, here's a set right here. Really, really classic shapes. White with a blue rim on the inside. Um, dance coffee cups, if you find them cheap, buy them every single time. Don't ever not buy one because they will always sell. Um, <clears throat> I bought two just, you know, two weeks ago that I paid $3 for, for three of them. And I sold them three days later for $50 for three of them. They're just really well made. They have really nice silhouettes. They're well known. They're collectible. They're a great brand. They have really classic colors. Uh, a dance mug. You could just never go wrong. They're great. Um, so that's a really easy way to start on Etsy if you want to sell vintage is coffee cups. I don't I don't know if you can make a living out of coffee cups, but you could definitely get a start. So that's important. Um, <clears throat> what else was I going to tell you? Oh, I was just going to tell you like a little bit about my style because everybody has, you know, different stuff that they're interested in selling. Some people sell on Etsy vintage. Oh, hang on. I'm going to plug in my computer. Wow, I'm really not prepared. That's my first ever video. Uh, let's see. Hang on. I don't want my computer to die. Let's see. Are you going to plug in? Yes. Okay. Oh. Mm, yes. I don't know. We'll see. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, some people just, you know, they'll like, anything is vintage, I'll sell it. Perfect. Whatever. That's totally a fine um, approach to selling. That's totally acceptable. It's just not really my style. I, I think in order to not be bored, I need to sell things that I like, that I'm interested in, that I want to sit there and photograph and handle and wash and, you know, give a crap about, basically. Um, so, I obviously love coffee cups. I really love kitchenware. I love kitchenware. I could just, just drown in it basically. Um, so I was just going to show you this nice piece I found the other day, this nice mid century, um, enamel wear. Oh my God. I really need to get my nails done. Don't look at those. Um, <clears throat> with this nice wooden handle and a wooden handle on the top inside is white. I mean, it's in great condition. There's a little bit of, you know, spotting on, on the edges, but it's this really nice kitchen blue. My mom always called it kitchen blue. Um, just gorgeous mid-century piece. Um, I bought it for $4 and 50 cents and it's on Etsy right now for, I believe $48 um mid-century is so popular right now and I mean it's always been popular with me I just love it I love the shapes I love the style I love the colors I love the sensibility um 
so that's that's an area that I really really enjoy. Um, another category that I love <laughs> that I don't know what else to name it is things in the shape of other things, like <laughs> like things for your kitchen that are shaped like animals. I can't get enough of them. Um, here's a great example. I don't know why, but uh, like a year ago, I start. I don't even really like ducks. I mean, I like ducks. They're fine. But I'm not like obsessed with ducks or anything. Um, but I started collecting duck kitchen things. I don't know why. I just couldn't stop finding things that were shaped like ducks. And I just like them. I don't know. So this one isn't even listed. I'm just keeping this one and my husband doesn't know it. Um, love a casserole shaped like a duck. I mean, it's just fun. Whatever. Um, but things that are shaped like other things. Kitchen items that are shaped like animals. People love them. They're cute. They're just irresistible. I don't know why you want them. I don't know if anyone knows why they want them. But they're just fun. They're cute. Ah! <laughs> um and then here is my most prized possession. This is also not listed on Etsy, but my husband knows I'm never going to sell this. This is staying in our house forever. This is a bread. <laughs> I love bread. I love carbs. They're my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And this is a ceramic thingy that you actually bake bread in. It came with a recipe to bake bread in the bread. So you open up this bread and there's bread inside. And the best part is that the handle is made out of pats of butter. I mean, that is the freaking coolest thing. This is the type of stuff that, where the hell are you going to find this anymore? They just don't make stuff like this anymore. They don't have a sense of humor. Um, so yeah, things shaped like other things. It's like my specialty. I love things shaped like other things. Um, <clears throat> so that's just a little bit about me. Um <laughs> <laughs> feels like a weird intro, but whatever. So I'll probably do um, a video once a week or so. Um, I'll do like haul videos when I go out and buy stuff. I'll tell you how much I pay for things. I'll tell you, you know, how much they sell for. And um, hopefully it won't take me nine whole years to go <laughs> full time. I don't think it will. Um, but yeah, we'll just do this thing together and uh, make it happen. So thanks for watching.